Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my channel. I've been working on restoring this lovely old 1983 Schaublin 125 CNC lathe and the current part I'm working on is the control module. Let's get some welding done. Yeah, so this week I'm doing a bit of this and a bit of that. After this video goes live, I'm going to do a live stream for my Patreons and members. If you'd like to support the channel, because it's quite expensive making videos for the wider internet on playing around with CNC machines, I'd appreciate if you join or just send me a coffee through PayPal. It's also a really nice gesture. Thanks a lot. Now when I left off last week, I'd tacked up most of the frame, but I was missing this panel. Luckily my mate Jörg had some time on Sunday, so we nipped back to Happy Lands, which is his happy space, otherwise known as a maker space, and quickly lasered up this part. So thanks a lot for that Jörg, I really appreciate it. Before I get into this, there were a couple of really good critical comments last week on my welding to say that I need to use more pre-gas because I'm getting sparks. Yeah, now this welder doesn't do pre-gas and it's only got a fixed one second post-gas. I've been trying to compensate for no post-gas by coming off the switch to break the arc, moving away just enough so that a new arc won't strike and then going back on the switch to give me post-gas. I'm still not that well coordinating it so it's not always working. See, I always get a little bit of soot and I'm still getting a bit of spark when I first arc, of course. The next issue I have is that this piece here is bowing backwards a bit, giving me a big gap. I put a ruler on it and it needs to pull forward till it's touching. So I'm guessing the correct uh, welding fixture is a tie wrap. Have you guys ever used tie wraps as welding fixtures? Whoops, I stayed on that one a bit long. Since this is the only bit that needs welding on the inside, I'll do this next. Quite open, so I'll do it with some filler rod. And I'll just do nice short little bits to get my hand in. Still need to practice that filler rod control. That's all over the place. Okay, so it was a first attempt. That wasn't a disaster. Well, it's good that I started with what will become a basically invisible seam because that looks bloody awful. Hmm, more practice required. And of course, the visible side looks even worse. I'll whack that with an angle grinder once I've finished all the rest of the welding. Right, so I've tacked this plate on. So now I can drill out these holes to 6.8 and tap them M8. Okay, so that's the last panel that needs to go on. I've already cleaned up all the edges with acetone and cleaned my filler rod. Right, well that's the whole housing tacked together. So before I weld all the edges, I'll take up its mounting bracket and try it out. Oops, dunk the needle. Right, once that mount arm is tacked up, I think I should try it out on the machine. Okay, so how's the clearance, Clarence? This is the range of rotation, that's maximum this way. Max this way. It looks like it's just going to clear the top of the tool holder, so there shouldn't be any interference there. Yeah, that looks pretty good for when you're getting closer to the chuck and stuff. And further away. All right, well, off camera, I did a bit of practice welding on the bottom. Yeah, my welds still aren't very even, but it's not going to fall apart. Especially my filler welds, 
they're pretty ugly, but hey, that's what you have angle grinders for. So now let's move on and weld around the outside. Since I don't have adjustable post gas, I try and switch off the arc, move away. But of course if I'm too close, I get the long arc and it blows those holes. It's annoying. Okay, that repair might be a bit of overkill. To prevent the whole thing warping too much and folding up like a pretzel, I'm doing lots of short welds to try and keep everything from getting too hot. Oh, and speaking of heat, this year I'm gonna try wintering over some jalapeno plants. It's been a very long autumn. Plants are still looking pretty healthy. I've already chopped back the most of the foliage. This one's the most easily separated. Get all the weeds out. These here are jalapenos. Also got one habanero. Fresh potting mix. Right, Mr. Habanero. You have a good nice winter sleep. I've got big expectations for you next year. Right, 2024 jalapenos. Yum. Oh darn. Yep, I knocked it onto the floor and busted my last Pyrex cup. Not sure if any of the normal ceramic cups fit this. Alrighty, back in business. What are you up to? Well, I've just been welding up my control panel. Once I finish all the welding, then I still need to do a whole bunch of grinding and painting. And then you can carry your wine in it. <laughs> right, well that's the main housing welded up. The quality of my welding ranges from a couple of centimeters, which with filler rod almost look like stacked dimes and some bits of fillerless world that won't even barely need grinding through, hmm, ain't gonna win any prizes with that one, down to the downright fugly. I would estimate that my ability to TIG weld is now probably approaching my ability to arc weld, which isn't much. Reminds me of those welds I did on Mikhail Rustinox Celtic 14 tailstock parts. Check the link above. For my buttons, it was suggested to me to try the Cherry MX Blues because these are the most clicky and tactile. I've got these two part keycaps, so I'll be able to put in wording or symbols, and I'm going to use the same symbols as Linux CNC's GMockerPy interface users because that's what I do. And these buttons can take a backlight. So they're designed with, for slots for a little LED. I won't be doing LEDs on all of them, but there are a few features and functions that will be getting LEDs. Probably have to drill a hole in this part of the keycap for it to shine through. To mount the keys, what I've done is made some little spacer plates. The keys are pretty high, so I'm gonna to need to space them back a bit. The idea being that this plate gets welded in place, I'll thread those four screw holes, then the main carrier plates just slot over, get screwed in place, and well, 
you know what I mean. Then the keys should only just sit slightly proud. I bought some little circuit boards to help with the wiring. First things first, all these holes need tapping. Clicos came in really handy for fixturing this during welding. I'll leave an affiliate link down below to these Clico clamps because everybody needs them. They're just so useful. that bent a little. All right, I'll have a go at this next. This is much thicker material, like five millimeter. So I need the welder pretty much maxed out for that. Well, I'll take that one. That looks surprisingly good for me. Yep, also not awful. Cool. You know, I didn't feel like I was making much progress with the quality of my welding, but then look at this nice thick flange onto a thick tube. I'm pretty happy with how that came out. I guess in general, I'm pretty happy with how the welding on the thick parts came out. Okay, we'll need to just knock down a little bit off those welds there. Shame I kind of screwed up the edge distance on that a bit. Well, a lot. Well, now it's time for the worst bit of all. Knocking down all of those welds, trying to clean it up, round it out, make it look nice. I think the angle grinding is about the worst bit, so you really got to get that over with fast. Quick body filling, and then I can start the fine uh, sanding on the corners and stuff to make them look nice and rounded. Now, someone's going to say it, so I might as well do it now. A grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. Right, the next step, I use the belt sander to try and even up any bumps. I'm going to mount the monitor. I welded this little tab with a couple of slots in it. And also made a plate, which unfortunately the holes moved on when I did the DXF migration to the laser printer, so I have to redrill the holes. It's going to pick up two mount holes for the buttons under here. So I just quickly joggled those in the vise. A couple of holes in it. And we're good to go. Apart from cleaning the paint gun, which I really don't enjoy, there's something kind of cool about getting to the point in a project where you're ready to paint stuff. Okay, how's this looking? Well, I think my welding's improving already. Right, so the face plates are going to be done in black. May as well use up the last of the paint in this rattle can. In this painting session, I also put a second layer of undercoat on the main cabinet. Right, that's dried a bit overnight. Just give it a quick uh, block back with 600 grit wet paper.
Okay, so I guess waiting for the paint to dry is probably as good a place as any to finish this week's video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next week.